four have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. And then if she flips to Ecclesiastes, I don't know if she's... Can you do it, Jessica? Oh, Robert, no, no wonder it's slow. Okay, Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, drink thy wine with a merry heart, for God now accepteth thy works. Let thy garments be always white, and let thy head lack no ointment. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the life of thy vanity, which he hath given thee under the sun, all the days of thy vanity, for that is the portion in this life, and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun." And then one more scripture, John chapter 15. And he actually got to it quicker than I did. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Would you pray? Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, tonight, God, I thank you again, Lord, for the opportunity to be in your house. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk and preach your word. I pray, God, you would anoint me to preach and speak the words of life that's needful. I pray, Lord, you open the ears of those sitting in these seats tonight, God, that they might receive tonight, Lord, something that would edify and encourage and uplift. And I ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You can be seated. Tonight, if I title this, it's Live Joyfully. Now, I said all that early, and you think, boy, how's he going to talk about living joyfully after all what he just said? Look, I learned something. If I can have a joy in my heart with all the heartaches I've been through, you can have a joy in your heart with all the heartaches you've been through. Because the problem is, and Wayne's been doing a lot of talking since I've been back, and I actually listened to some on the Internet about words and about topics. And I've heard him say this many times, especially when he preached on love a couple of weeks ago. And he said, the world has a different definition for love. Well, the world has a diff diff different definition for joy. And that's why I pulled out some of these scriptures tonight. Because you see, the world has a different thought of joy. And I actually looked up joy in, in the concordance to, uh, yesterday and been dealing with this for a while. The Lord's been showing me some things. <laughs> and there are 13 Hebrew words for joy that are interpreted joy in our King James Version. There are seven words for joy interpreted in Greek. And each one has a different distinct idea. You see, the problem is our language is just pitiful because we're slackers over here, pretty much, just honest. You tell somebody you love them, and you might hate their guts. You love your dog, and you love your wife, and you use the same word for it. Well, that's pitiful. I hope you love your wife more than you love your dog. You know, we say, "Oh, I'm." Somebody gives you a present. Oh, you, I'm, I'm happy you gave me joy. Okay. You come to church, you shout the house down. Oh, I feel the joy of the Lord. Okay. And then you get the little kids get up and sing, I got the joy, joy, joy down in my heart. All different types of joy. If you look joy up in the, in the dictionary, you find there's four definitions for joy. The first is it is an emotion of happiness. Emotions last and change very frequently. You can be happy one moment. And your world can come crashing down the next. A baby, you can scold that kid and they get mad at you. And the next thing you know, they come running up, Daddy, I love you. My God, we need to be more like that, especially when the pastor preaches like he did Sunday. Or when he tells you, do you love me? I'm like, oh, Lord. But it is. It's, it's a thing that's just temporary. And anything can cause you to find, feel that. Because the next definition of joy is it's a cause. Something causes you to be joyful. You get a gift. Your wife makes you. And I noticed this in the scripture I just read, and I'm going to be going back to it here in a minute in Ecclesiastes. He says, eat with joy. 
Boy, we like to associate joy with food. As you can tell, I don't have a, although I have lost a few pounds since Paul is gone because I don't have as good a cook because I have to cook. But uh, we do, we associate food. I've got a little thing left that Paula had that had all her spices in it that was her seasoning that she seasoned everything with. And so I'm so accustomed to that taste. And I told Cassie, I said, we're getting pretty low. I said, I hope we can figure out what your mom threw in that jar. Because I said, I've ate that for 12 years now. I don't know anything else. But we do. We associate joy for eating. But yet then we talk about the joy of the Lord. Each type of joy. Matter of fact, when I was looking in the Hebrew, there was one word for joy that actually meant you shout up and down and t- turn around. And that's what they did in the Bible. It was at one point when they went to the, uh, when he said shout for joy, it, when they were at the, the wall, the walls of Jericho, they actually, it said, they spinned around and shouted for joy. I thought, well, we've done that in church. I've been spinning for years. I didn't even know there was a Hebrew word for it. But as you be, I began to look, I thought, well, there's all these different types of joy. Some was like when you see somebody you love, you feel joy. But the number one word for joy was something called in the Greek, kara. And I can't pronounce the Hebrew. I won't even try. But they both meant the same thing. The one in the Hebrew meant joy in a religious ceremony or a sacrifice. And the one in the New Testament is the one Jesus used. And it just means joy as a state of being. Because you see, the fourth definition, and you can go home and look it up in Webster's if you want. It is a state of joy. A state of bliss is actually what it says. And you see, I want to go back first here before I get into the words of Jesus to what Solomon said. Solomon wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. It's the last book he wrote. He actually wrote several books, but only three are recorded in the, New Test- or in the Old Testament. There's a few others he wrote when he was backslidden, and they're not recorded in the Scripture. When he walked away from God. But Ecclesiastes was written when he got old. Man, the man had 300 wives, 700 concubines. That's enough right there to age you. God only knows how many kids he had. I know how nine kids have aged me. I've done lost all my hair and my beard's starting to turn gray. I used to pick on Norman all the time about losing his hair and mine's falling out quicker than his now. But it's true. And he began to look at his life. He saw where he left God. He saw where he had made all his mistakes. And when he got down to the end of his life, he thought, you know what? As I'm looking at life, and you read the book of Ecclesiastes, it's a very good book to read. And he said, eat your food with joy, drink your wine, be merry. He realized, let's be happy. He said, as long as your garments are without spot... And your head is still anointed. In other words, what he said is, as long as the Holy, he was Old Testament, but basically what he was saying, as long as the Holy Ghost is in control and you have the anointing and the oil of God's Spirit down inside of you and your garments are clean, go ahead and have fun in life. Because the next verse he says, live joyfully with the wife of your youth. I ain't worried about a wife. I like where he said, live joyfully. He went back to his first love. He remembered his first love. You remember when you first fell in love? I don't remember when I fell in love with Paula. You've all heard it, so I'm not going to tell that story. But I guarantee you Lori remembers when she fell in love with Wayne, and I've heard Wayne talk about he was in love with Lori, and he knew he was going to marry Lori way before she even knew who Harley Wayne was. He even wrote it in his yearbook. What are you going to do in 10 years? I'm going to be married to Lori Woolham. Determined man. You remember when you first fell in love? Well, I remember when I first fell in love with Jesus. And you see, that's what happened to the church in Ephesus over there in the book of Revelations. Jesus told them, he said, return to your first love. See, that's what he's saying. Get back. And I remember, I remember. I don't know if some of you know who Sister Jed is. I know some of them do. She was 90 some lot years old the last time I spoke with her. And I sat in her house, and I looked her dead in the face. And I said, Sister Jen, I've got to ask you something. And she said, what's that, Brother Steve? I said, you're so, so old. She didn't care how old she was. I said, 
And because she was sitting there and she said, I've never picked up one thing God told me to take down. And she was testifying about all the things that she did in her life. And I said, Sister Jen, I want to ask you one thing. Do you still have that first love? And this blessed sister who I have more respect for than, than most people, she said, Steve, I do not have the love that I had when I first got saved. Pastoring will do that to you. Let me let you in on that. Dealing with people will do that to you. You don't even have to pastor. Deal with Cricket texts me every day. Dad, I'm quitting McDonald's. I've gotten so sick of hearing her text me every day. I'm quitting McDonald's again. I told her I was going to pick on her tonight in the sermon. She was really mad yesterday. We went somewhere, and this is just a sidebar. They thought she was my girlfriend. She said, Dad, that made me sick. I said, I think the girl was trying to flirt with me because I know I don't look that young. She said, you, you don't even look like you're 40. I thought, uh-huh. I still got my wedding band on, and I ain't looking. I'll let you know that. Uh, back to the Bible. I'm not Solomon. I'm not looking for 300. I'll tell you that. One was enough. Paula was enough for a whole lifetime. I'll, I'll let you know that. She'll probably haunt me tonight, but that's okay. Uh, but seriously, he said, live joyfully. Because really, when you've done everything else, it doesn't really matter. I've learned, and believe me, Paula collected everything, and I'm having a yard sale this summer, and if you want to come down and get stuff at a bargain, you can. Matter of fact, I'm liable to just give it to you to get it out of the house. I told the kids that you're off school tomorrow. I said, we're going in the attic. We're making room. I'm taking boxes to the attic, and then I'm going to start going through one by one and getting rid of stuff because I'm tired of having it. Because you know what? The things of earth, they don't matter anymore to me. You know what matters to me? My babies. And my God. You know why I came back to the mission? I actually gave my pastor in West Virginia my membership transfer. I really didn't want to transfer because I felt like my heart was still here. Wayne thought I was mad at him, never would come back. And, uh, but I'll be honest, the last few months we were sitting there and couldn't go to church, and my church, a wonderful preacher, a wonderful pastor. I hated the music. It was worse than Paul sometimes. I just threw that in, Paul. And, uh, and probably somebody might be watching on the Internet tonight from down there. Uh, but seriously, I, I, I love the church, but I just, it just didn't, it didn't feel like here. And it was running about three, 400 people, and it had a hopping children's ministry, and that was one of the main reasons we went there, hopping youth ministry. One of the ladies of the church, her husband, won the lottery and donated a million dollars to the church, so it was the best facility you ever wanted. They had everything, and they did have the Spirit of God, but it just wasn't me. And if anybody wants to do that, Wayne says, if, if they're not saved and they want to play lottery, he will take the money. He will take the money from it, the tithe. Um, but that's the church I went to. It was a good church. But it just didn't minister to me. And so we started watching. And I actually started watching North Cleveland because you guys didn't have streaming. So I watched the National Church down in Tennessee because half the time Rusty's didn't work. And uh, Paula kept saying, and we'd watch Tommy Bates. Uh-oh, better not say that. But, yeah, we did on Sunday night sometimes because it couldn't get anything. And uh, Paula said, I wish the mission had streaming. And I said, I do too. And then, of course, after she died, y'all started streaming services. And whether you know it or not, I've sent that to different people, and there are different people. As a matter of fact, my old pastor's daughter, gets daughter-in-law gets on here and watches, and she may be watching tonight. You, that's an outreach. I'm still talking about joy. I ain't forgot where I'm going. Just give me a few minutes. I'm a little older than what I was the last time. Wayne tells me I'm a little more senile. I'm living with mom. So that's even worse. Amen, Rita? Uh, if Cricket was in here, she ain't, Mammy. Um, but seriously, it, it's time to just enjoy life. Because the things of life, really, the things of earth doesn't matter. It's what you put your trust in God and take care of your family and love each other. Because that's what it all comes down to. Now, when you go back to what Jesus said here, over in chapter 16, he's talking and he said... It's just like a woman when she has a child. I ain't never had a baby. I was there when Paula had Cassie, and she was having a C-section, so she didn't feel no pain, except when she got over it because she had 72 staples around her belly. 
but uh, it's painful. But once that's done, you forget about that pain, right, sisters? Am I right? You forget about that pain. 